Because everything in Faro is an object, that means that you can do a lot of heavy modifications to, Faro, to the Faro system. You can change, for example, uh, just a few libraries, just a few classes, whole libraries, you can change the graphical uh, user interface, you can even change the language and, and the VM. And of course, because you, want, you don't really want your changes to uh, you know, affect you all the time, uh, you will create in a lot of different kind of images. But there is also an easier way to manage those images. And one of my favorite tools from managing, uh, uh, managing images and getting one of the latest versions of Faro uh, is uh, the Faro Launcher tool. Uh, what you see here is actually the Faro Launcher. Uh, it is a Faro application. Uh, what you see here is the Faro window and it ru runs uh, the Faro uh, Launcher tool. And what it does is actually downloads uh, images from a server which is called a continu continuous integration server. And what this server is doing actually is that each time uh, a developer commits uh, adds a, a piece of code, this code passes uh, through a, a set of tests that the developer has created and when those sets are passed uh, then it creates an image uh, that it uploads to the server. And this image is what you can download for a launcher. If the tests fail, then uh, the developer is notified that there's something wrong with their code. And that means that the continuous integration server has a lot of uh, images that uh, work with uh, and contain different kinds of tools and different kinds of file applications inside it. Uh, one of the things that people you want to do is download one of the latest versions of FAR, one of the default versions of FAR. Uh, here we have the common tools sections, as you can see. And we have Faro 4, which is the better version of Faro. Uh, it's not recommended for uh, production. It's something that... Uh, uh, it's a cutting edge uh, a release. And this cutting, re uh, this cutting uh, release is qu quite experimental and may contain some bugs. Uh, the Faro 3, on the other hand, is the stable version. It's the version that uh, ha it's at least one year in the development. And uh, has many bug fixes and it's, uh, it's actually quite reliable and all, mo most of the tools that are in included inside it are quite stable. And of course there are older, uh, uh, the older version too. There's the Moose Suite which is uh, a collection of uh, tools that help development. There are visualization tools inside, inspector tools, debugger tools and many great tools that help you uh, with your um, Development. You can say that it's a development environment inside a developer now. It's a Faro inside a Faro because it contains, it really extends many of the abilities of Faro with new tools and new features. But because those features are additional, it's, uh, it's, um, it's developing separately. And from there on, there are actually other uh, things you can actually load. Now you see that now, uh, as soon as I click the arrow here, it uh, connects with the server and downloads the information of the developing images. And we see here there are several kind of things that you can download. Uh, we have uh, different kinds of things and different kinds of tools that we can get. And what those things are, are actually Faro images that contained inside Faro code and specific libraries and specific tools that you can use. And those images are actually well tested to work uh, with this specific setup so you can actually uh, download it without worrying that it may conflict with existing library. Uh, what else we have here? There's a Moose Jenkins. Again, this is the, uh, it, it, this is the Moose suite which contains all the Moose tools and Moose Jenkins contains individual Moose uh, tools, ID tools that we can use. Uh, one of them, for example, is Rosal, which I have used for creating graphics and graphs and visualizing objects. And there are many other, uh, as you can see, libraries inside it here. So what do you have to do? Let's say that I want to download uh, a, new, a new image that I'm going to use to create a game. Okay, so what you do is click on this button, which is Create Image, and you create a name for your image. So let's call it Game. Okay, and press OK. And now all you have to do is actually wait for the image to download. Now, when the image downloads, it's actually put in inside a specific directory. In macOS, it is uh, on the user uh, application. Uh, uh, sorry, it's actually library. Uh, it's in the home code directory, a library folder, 
and uh, application support, and then there is a subfolder called Faro, and inside this subfolder is actually putting all the images. And you will see in the moment that we can actually see also uh, the location of the image as well. So if I want to open this image, which is here, all we have to do is double click it or click in those, on this icon, which is launch. Okay, let's double click it. And then you simply see, let me put this in perspective. You can see immediately that here we have, uh, you know, the new image, which is the uh, Faro 3 image. We can use and customize and already has named it game image for our purposes. So, uh, if I open it again, and the other thing you can do is, of course, find, you can rename it, you can recreate it, which uh, actually redownloads it, delete it, and copy it, uh, which actually replicates this with a new name. Uh, you can also show it in folder, which means that you, it can, it's going to show you exactly where your image is. So you can see here, it's, as I said, in uh, users for, uh, in the library, which is in my home folder, library, application support, uh, there should be a Faro here, Faro, images, game, and it has inside the image file, the changes files, and some other stuff. And uh, what else? And in Windows, it's actually quite similar. It's, I think it's application support. And, but of course, you can find the path if you go here and you go to the settings. So here is actually the settings. Now, Faro Launcher. You can choose the template repositories, which here is you can actually choose what kind of the repositories you want to uh, display. As you can see, it had a category here, which is the kind of repository it displays. So you can disable that if you want to, or enable them. Uh, you can enable the development environment. This is actually for people that want to contribute to, to Fire Launcher. Uh, it's useful for launching the, uh, you know, the uh, opening, uh, closing the graphical interface of the tool, and opening a, a Faro. Uh, the Faro environment for you to edit uh, the Faro launcher code and you know contribute and add code to uh, the main repository. Uh, this is the location of your images, so it depends what kind of system you are. You're going to uh, find the image in a different folder. You can quit on launch, which means that as soon as you launch an image, it's going to quit the Faro launcher, or you can choose to disable that so you can leave the Faro launcher open. And templates creates a startup. Uh, it's uh, it clears it clears the templates list, which is the templates actually the things that. It displays on the right side, and uh, I think uh, when simple lenser start, startup retains the templates list from their last run. And you can use also a proxy. Uh, yeah, and that's actually a very cool way to uh, manage your images and create different images. Of course, you can replicate existing images and create different kind of variations. You can back up your code. And this is a very cool way to manage images and manage code. It's not the only way to manage code. We will see in the later tutorial how to work with Monticello. But overall, uh, this is how it works. And of course, you can quit it using the, the quit button, or you can enable disable quit on launch when you launch an image. And of course, you can close it from here. So there's nothing really complicated about it. Uh, you're going to find information about uh, Fire Launcher. I uh, think in Ubuntu, it you can actually download it through uh, the embedded repositories, uh, Windows and MacOS, you can download it from the Small Talk Hub website. I'm going to provide the link in the description of this video. And it's a simple download, and you all you have to do is actually double click it to open it and you know start downloading images and working with images without having you know to uh, go back to the website site or find specific websites so you can download a specific image. And that actually helps you a lot with the management sequences. So that's all for today. See you on the next tutorial.